The National Park Service arrowhead appears. White text on a black screen reads, Scientists and Citizens, Investigating Aquatic Insects in Great Lakes National Parks. A map of the Great Lakes. Two red stars indicate the locations of Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore and Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore. The waves from Lake Michigan break on a sandy beach. Two black and white birds scour the sand for food. Then, an aerial view of the park. Sleeping Bear Dunes is a special place because of the glacial features that are here. They're very dramatic sand dune systems. You know, many natural features like rivers and streams. A male ranger with a beard stands in front of a group of trees. Text appears. Kevin Skirl, Chief of Natural Resources, Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore. Research in national parks is important to us because these lands are the people's lands and we look at the park as kind of the nation's laboratory. And it's important to us as resource managers to understand our resources better so that we can better protect them. A grassy marsh. Then, two men wade into the river with instruments. One man drops a probe into the water and looks at a display in his hand. The other man writes down readings from the display onto a log on a clipboard. So Dr. DeWalt's research is important because often invertebrate species are kind of left out of the picture. You know, we learn a lot about birds and mammals, but it's also important to understand those parts of the food web because we're really looking to manage ecosystems as a whole and we want to see healthy ecosystems and, you know, native species thrive and diversity expand. A bald eagle lands on a tree branch, then the two men in the river. This is the Crystal River at Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore. And I study aquatic insects. The ones I'm interested in are stoneflies, mayflies, and caddisflies. These are three orders of insects that the national parks are interested in because they're indicators of water quality. As the two men look at samples, a large fish is visible in the clear water. It swims in front of them. And they also indicate how well the habitat's doing. By the way, this has great insects in it. And I'm interested in knowing whether or not parks protect aquatic insects at a greater rate than, say, the surrounding area. A bearded man wearing a green jacket and a ball cap stands near the river. Text appears, R. Edward DeWalt, Ph.D., Aquatic Entomologist, University of Illinois. We would hope so. That's one of the objectives of national parks. And so what I'm looking for when I come here is <laughs> habitat that's intact. The two men lift a large log. A stone fly squirms on the log. So I want to go to streams that have lots of natural wood in the bottom, lots of cobble that flow pretty fast, that are clear and clean. And the National Park helps provide those sorts of streams because they protect them. A school of fish. In lots of places where I've worked, I've had volunteers helping me. At night, a woman carrying a tray kneels next to the river on the bank. She sets the tray down, pours liquid from a plastic bottle into the tray, and turns on a light within the tray. The Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore set up this volunteer network who would set my traps out at night and at night go back out and find them and bring them back to me and then set up a day where we'd have volunteers come in and help sort that material. In a lab, the woman observes dead insects through a microscope. The benefit for a volunteer helping scientists conduct science is one, they get to learn about this great natural laboratory that we have. Most people would not have any idea what occurs below the level of the water. They also will learn what it takes to conduct science that's useful. In the woods at night, the woman works with another woman. They observe and capture insects that have landed on a sheet hanging in the woods. A light is attached to the sheet. They might also decide that they like it. And I, I've had volunteers uh, decide to change their majors because of some of the work they've done for me. It gives them some guidance on what they might want to do with their lives, doing something that's really useful to the scientists and the society in general. The women discuss their finds. Then, the woman sits in the lab. Text appears, Victoria H. Brinson, volunteer, Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore. When I want to volunteer, I'm like, I'm thinking, oh, maybe a nice office gig, not really going outside. But when they said insects, I was like, really? Insects? And this was night collection. It wasn't daytime collection. So you have to go out at night in the middle of the forest and collect insects. And I'm like, what did I get myself into? <laughs>
The women collect insects from the tray at night. I think that was a, like a turning point in my life, I think, because being here and doing a citizen science program actually opened up my eyes to other ways that I can help out. And I really liked the environment after that. And I'm like, you know what, let me just go into environmental science. I think this is really what I want to do. The Great Lakes Research and Education Center logo appears. Then, the two men wade in the river with nets. A woman with grayish hair wearing a brown vest sits in a lab. Text appears, Joy Marburger, Ph.D., Research Coordinator, Great Lakes Research and Education Center. The Great Lakes Research and Education Center facilitate research and better monitoring in the Park Service. Because the national parks are important for enjoyment of the public, and we have to manage them in order to protect the resource. And one of the ways you protect the resource is to have better research done on that resource. The two women collect more specimens from the sheet. Then that research can be conveyed to the public through citizen science. Is this the only color it comes in? Or? The public actually gains a lot of knowledge from working with the researcher directly. We combine all the various research components. And you can recognize these because these are actually what the tools are of the research, how it applies to management and how to further better science to try to do a better job of managing our park resources. A sandy tree-lined dune overlooks Lake Michigan. Then, the view of the lake from a boat as it travels across the lake. End credits roll.